afternoon and thank you, Dr. Kurin. So now I'm gonna start talking about our New York Value Menu project. And um, we are conducting uh, on-farm trials. We began in 2022 and we're still conducting them and planning to have more next year. And we are looking into two uh, knowledge gas gaps. Uh, one is uh, the need of information to update the, our uh, manure nutrient creating system, uh, taking into account that now there are different manure types, uh, different methods of application from where um, uh, our current met, uh, creating system was developed. And our second gap looks into the potential economics of using manure and also tapping into what are the yield and forage quality benefits of using manure as a replacement for synthetic uh, nitrogen. And we have different funding sources. So uh, our plot layout looks pretty much uh, the same as the one Dr. Kurin described for our trials in 2016 and 2017. We have uh, six strips. In this case, the blue ones received manure in during the spring, and then the yellow ones didn't. Uh, each of those strips is between 1,200 and 1,900 feet long and between 50 and 120 feet wide. For this farm, we went there and flagged around the uh, yellow strips because the farm was going to apply to the rest of the field. Uh, in the middle, we have the satellite picture of how that manure application looked like. They didn't apply uh, the strips on yellow. They look uh, drier uh, in the picture and then went on and applied to uh, the rest of the field, including our three uh, manure uh, strips. Then at side dressing time, uh, when the plant is between B4 and B6 stage, uh, each of those strips receive uh, six different nitrogen side dress rates. Uh, those go from zero to 150 or 200, depending on the condition of each of the farms. Uh, this uh, project began in 2022. So between 2022 and 2023, we have 11 sites throughout New York State. And this year we have nine sites. We're still working on some of that data. And something that I want to stress here is that this is research happening in local on-farm research trials. And I think for this kind of research, that is very important because we can get to test different soil characteristics, different fields, fields with different manure histories. Uh, different weather conditions. Uh, we are working with farms that have different agronomic management systems from no-till, different levels of drainage. Uh, also, we are working with uh, the manure that is available in on each of the uh, farms. The farmer chooses which manure uh, they're going to be using. Uh, and also, we are working with the application method on timing of each of those farms. So I think all of that is very important. Uh, between uh, the years that we have researched so far, we were able to work with uh, nine farms using liquid manure, five using digestate and one using compost. All of these sources come from dairy farms, so different treatments, but all of it is uh, dairy manure. The application rates, one had peritons an acre, uh, so that was for compost, and then the rest, the ones that are using liquid manures, uh, one had um, less than 5,000 gallons, seven had between five and 10,000 gallons an acre, and six uh, were having rates between 10 and 15 gallons an acre. The methods of applications also vary between our trials. 10 of the farms were doing injection, three did broadcast plus uh, incorporation later, and two only broadcasted without incorporation. Uh, now we're going to introduce the concept of the most economical rate of nitrogen, and we're going to be seeing these graphs throughout my slides. And this is similar to also to uh, what Dr. Kurin presented. Uh, we have silage yield on the X and the Y axis, and we have the different nitrogen rates that we applied on the on, on the X. On brown manure strips, on gray the non-manure ones. And the uh, brown or orange box is showing the most economical rate of nitrogen. So for this farm, in the manure plots, we needed 56 pounds of citrus nitrogen to have a yield of 29 tons. And we call it the most economical rate of nitrogen because that's the moment when adding extra citrus nitrogen doesn't pay for extra uh, silage uh, yield. And we base that on the cost of a pound of uh, uh, nitrogen and also the cost of a ton of silage or a bushel of grain. Uh, so then for the non-manure one, uh, it was 
this plot needed 114 pounds of hydrate nitrogen to yield 28 and a half um, tons of silage. So if we look at the difference of nitrogen needed between these two ones, uh, we can see that uh, Manur was able to offset 58 pounds of uh, citrus nitrogen. Here I'm presenting some of our trials where we saw a nitrogen response and also a yield bump. For the sake of time, I won't go in details into each of them, but um, I think we are seeing two very important points that are our main conclusions from uh, uh, this kind of responses. One is that manure is consistently uh, offsetting fertilizer needs. And the second one is that we are seeing higher yielding, uh, higher yields in the manure strip versus the non-manure ones regarding, regardless the uh, application of nitrogen. This is a sneak peek of our 2024 trials. We are still uh, getting some uh, yield back, yield data back from, from the farm. So we don't have all of them here yet, but these years so far we are seeing the same and going into the same conclusions. We are looking into yield bombs and also uh, manure offsetting nitrogen, uh, citrus nitrogen. As in some of our trials, uh, we saw this a scenario where uh, rather than seeing a nitrogen response cure, we see here flat lines. Uh, as we increase the amount of citrus nitrogen, there was no yield increase, and also there are no difference between the manure and the non-manure plots. And this means that there was already a, enough nitrogen in the soil coming from past uh, nitrogen crates, uh, mainly past manure applications, and also the nitrogen that the soil provides by itself. And here the main conclusion we are drawing is that uh, these trials, uh, we see larger manure histories, uh, but then uh, we see that the soil is able to provide all the nitrogen needed. And also these are a fields that were very high yielding. So I think that's positive news. Another scenario we've seen in our trials uh, is this one where uh, we saw a very large yield bomb that also came with a greater need of citrus nitrogen uh, due to the application of manure. So if we see, uh, we look at the trial on the left, uh, the manure plots needed 113 pounds of citrus nitrogen to yield 17 tons of silage versus the non-manure one, which needed just 56 pounds of citrus nitrogen, so almost 100, uh, 50 pounds less but also the yield was 12 and a half tons. That's almost a five tons difference. So that yield increase was very large, but also it came with an increase on the need of inorganic fertilizer, uh, side rest fertilizer. And these two plots where we saw these are also the two ones that we had in the, uh, were in that line of maybe needing uh, potassium. So we think that some of these uh, larger yield increases associated with both nitrogen and potassium in manure. So yeah, uh, we also have within our database five sites where we are testing nitrogen carryover. Uh, we have our regular uh, trials in year one when manure was applied and then in year two we continue to uh, have the same trial and, and look into the carryover nitrogen in this case for this farm as an example, we applied 10,300 gallons an acre of digestate in the spring of 2023. In that year, we saw that the manure uh, was able to set all the nitrogen the crop needed and also the yields were higher than the non-manure ones. On the year two, uh, looking at the carryover of that manure application, now we see that um, uh, citrate so nitrogen was needed in, um, in manure plots, but still the yields in manure were consistently higher and at, at the most economical rate of nitrogen, almost one ton higher than the no manure one. Uh, so that's showing the carryover benefits of manure application. So our preliminary conclusions are that one, manure can offset fertilizer needs and also can boost corn yield. Uh, manure history plays an important role uh, when we look and into the yield and hasten effect of manure application. As we saw uh, between some plots that responded and didn't respond to our treatments. And then uh, manure sources differ in nutrient uh, supply. That's why we are uh, working with different farms with different manure types. 
And this is uh, ongoing work. We also want to tap into the economics, see what are the economic benefits of applying manure, how far away we can move manure and still making it uh, economically sound. Uh, we are also looking at, into sustainability and efficiency indicators. One of those are feed level nutrient mass balances for these scenarios. And we are also trying to develop tools to improve uh, nutrient use.